Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about legacy systems. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, what are the, what would you say are the general reasons why companies don't replace their legacy systems? Well, because they're either not aware of or indifferent to that they have legacy systems because the cost is it might be high or it might not matter so much to them because they have other things going on that they are prioritizing instead it's sort of like asking if there's a new car on the market uh, why don't you buy it if yours is older there's uh, or a TV or you know doesn't really matter it really comes down to you yourself sort of where you draw the line for what is acceptable and what's not so acceptable and usually larger comp companies have no real incentive to replace something that is working uh, because usually the decision makers of these sorts of issues are well it's a bit of a complex situation let me try to explain explain it as best as I can, at least from what I've seen. So the thing that makes a refactor or an update or something like that happen really comes down to the scope of the, re the thing that you want to fix if in, in, in a legacy system and who makes, makes the observation and how much they actually can affect their work environment. So as an example, a uh, a software developer might start by saying that yeah we have a legacy system the reason why they are usually concerned about it is because they are directly affected by the negative impact of having shitty code for example they themselves are being affected now what then happens is that they either if it's a small issue well they might just fix it done and done or they will do the thing that uh, in many cases uh, they do which is to basically communicate somehow that they're gonna fix it to a stakeholder or like a manager or some like a product manager or something like that now the next thing happens which is all right does the product owner or product manager feel like this is a good investment or like do they agree with that technical depth is a bad thing and that really comes down to them again, like a personal value system, if they have other deadlines or things that they feel is more pressing and concerning because they have a lot of stuff to do. For example, a classic one is that they feel like there's not enough time. Then they will try to, then they will basically shut that down and it doesn't go further than that. Now, if it gets to a point where the, even the product manager or someone who is higher up agrees that yeah you should probably do something about it then the question becomes all right how much of this can you fix because fixing an entire legacy system it really depends on the scope if you're fixing a few components or services within whatever you system you're dealing with that might be one thing but some systems are so vast or so like a problem cascades so long that it becomes a little bit of a snowballing effect and um, usually I've said so before that the big rewrite usually doesn't work because usually the you find sooner or later that the cost of making a full migration is actually so gigantic that very few companies will accept it or will think that it's a good idea but let's say for the sake of argument that you're in one of those situations where you now need to fix a fairly severe problem where you might have to allocate full-time resources to do that now you need to sort of depending on how far up you go communicate to someone to sign off on that thing because the product owner might not feel comfortable or might not have the influence to affect this thing that happens over multiple teams and so now you don't have just a problem that you control within your own team you have a problem across multiple teams which means that now a manager has to step in and that person is going to have to make an assessment is this a worthwhile investment and they're going to have to do like a business case and like analyze and so forth and so forth because usually this takes money or budget or capacity from somewhere else and this thing continues until basically one or two things happen one or two things happen 
someone somewhere has a value system where they prioritize efficient working software like there, there's some business case or some value into fixing this thing and it usually boils down to can you prove that something is going to improve with this thing and if you can't the system stays at it as it is because on average the a company will prioritize profits um, velocity etc etc over comfort and that's why it's really if you want to see people who truly suffer every day you should talk to people who work in internal like support roles within an or IT organization who have like these self-made internal systems that are like real like basically shit um, they're walking legacy and usually fairly badly made and you see for the company it's usually cheaper to just have them use those old systems than it is to fix those systems because the cost of fixing them versus the benefit you get from them is usually not well they consider at the very least that to not be uh, much of an issue because they have a hundred other things that they want to work on and so if you want to fix those sorts of systems I usually say you have to attach a money value to it if you can't attach a money value to it you might as well forget about it because the higher up the chain I talk, I'm talking the further away you get from the software the code and the more everything becomes alright this is money basically what do I want to spend it on? Do I want to spend it on new features, making more money for the things that, well, basically doing the things that I want as a manager or like the projects that we concern ourselves with? Or do I want to fix something that is working today but just makes my employees unhappy? In some cases, it's so bad that employees can prove basically definitively that certain systems are costing like they're hemorrhaging money for the company and it doesn't really matter because if when it all is said and done it always comes back to the same thing does the person in charge or the person who is a, is affected by this situation well do they care about it software developers are usually the quickest to care because we sit with them the same thing with people who actually use the systems they are also very quick to complain about them because they are directly affected but when you get higher and higher, like you don't get affected about it in the same way. You can almost think it about it as a little bit as how most people think about, you know, horrors within the in the world. People care a lot if it's them who are being affected or someone they care about that's being affected. But if it's someone in a faraway country somewhere and they basically don't know anything about it, they care less about it. The same thing happens when we talk about practically anything like this, where it's you know, the person making the call has very little almost nothing to do with the daily grind of someone who's using these systems or working with them so it's as I said it's really more of a political reason in many cases and a question of if the impact of these legacy systems is great enough to warrant a update or a rewrite and so forth it's pretty much as I said like you trying to decide if you're gonna buy a new television or something like that it really comes down to do you have the money do you feel like you need one it's the old one working all of these sorts of questions basically the same evaluation so what I want you to take away from this is that the reason why companies don't replace their legacy systems is because sometimes it's really really costly and usually it comes down to a cost value analysis like do you need to do this some systems are so old guys and so costly to replace that it's cheaper for the company to just hire people who will endure working with those sorts of systems see the banking world or really really um, old companies who've been around for longer than the IT age for references uh, I think the oldest system that I've ever been part of or uh, had a look at was built somewhere in the 70s I think running on RGB I think I didn't I had to look that up I had never even heard about uh, this programming language and so like th that is literally the case and this is one of those business critical systems it's used for everything that is very important to this company which means that it's gonna stay there pretty much until well I don't know uh, forever because the cost of making it into something or like the, it's working well enough that they will prefer keeping it versus rewriting it or so forth to be up with modern standards and modern practices and usually as I said 
it really comes down to can you find someone in the hierarchy depending on how severe or how big the system is and how much you want to change who will support the idea of fixing that legacy system and in my experience it usually comes down to the personal values of whoever you're talking to so if you're talking to another software developer they might prioritize it or so forth and the other part is a money value. If you can put a money value on it, you have a greater chance of getting something done, but even that might not help because in some cases you can put a money value on it, but the company doesn't have enough resources to go around and they have stuff that is they feel is more important than whatever the cost of having this thing is. And in many cases, uh, these legacy systems, um, they will just continue working forever, practically, because the cost of having on people who don't like using them or unhappy workers is lower than the cost of migration. Have a great day.